Puss went ahead and saw some men and women reaping grain in a field. My good fellows, you can reap later, but listen to me now. The king is coming this way, and he'll make mincemeat of you unless you say that these fields belong to the Lord Marquis of Carabas, Puss announced. The reapers were very puzzled, but they definitely did not want to become mincemeat. They promised to tell the king that the fields belonged to nobody but Lord Marquis of Carabas. Puss went ahead and warned everybody to tell the king that the land belonged to Lord Marquis. The people thought that it wouldn't be right to mess with Lord Marquis. They decided to do exactly what the cat asked. But Puss had still more work to do. Huff! Puff! He ran all the way until he reached a huge castle. Can you guess whose castle it was? Yes, the castle and all the lands belonged to a fierce and powerful ogre. But Puss was not scared of the ogre. He knocked at the castle door. Blim, blam. Two guards opened the door. I'd like to pay my respects to your mighty master, said Puss. The guards knew that the ogre loved anybody who admired him. So they let Puss in at once. Puss bowed low to the ogre. I have heard much about your great powers. Is it really true that you can transform yourself into any animal you wish? Asked Puss. Even a lion? Watch me, said the ogre. Right before Puss's eyes, he transformed himself into a mighty lion. He roared so fiercely that Puss sprang up the curtains in fright. The ogre laughed loudly. That's amazing, said Puss. But I bet you can't turn yourself into a small creature. That's the most difficult thing in the world. I can, said the ogre. No, no, it would be impossible for a mighty ogre to turn into something like, uh, for instance, uh, a mouse, said Puss. Oh, really? asked the ogre, snapping his fingers. Boom! The ogre became a tiny mouse and scurried across the room. Quick as lightning, Puss pounced on the mouse and ate it in one gulp. <coughs> Puss licked his lips. He clapped his hands three times and summoned all the people living in the castle. The ogre is no more, Puss announced. Will you accept Lord Marquis of Carabas as your master? He is kind and just, good and generous. The guards, maids, cooks, servants, and everyone else in the castle looked at Puss in surprise. But they nodded at once. They had never really liked the ogre anyway. Puss ordered everyone to prepare a feast for Lord Marquis and his very special guest, the king himself. The coach with the king, the princess, and my master will be here soon. I have to wake up the ogre right away. Meanwhile, the king travelled through the countryside, speaking to the people, to learn that almost all the land around him belonged to the young man by his side. When the king's coach finally reached the castle, Puss ran out to welcome them. Welcome to our humble abode, Puss said to the king. The king gulped. The castle was bigger 
and even more stunning than his own. Puss led them straight to the huge dining hall. The table groaned with the weight of roast chicken, rabbit stew, mince pies, smoked duck, and hundreds of other dishes. The king was in seventh heaven. After eating the great feast and sipping the finest wine he had ever tasted, the king said, My dear Lord Marquis, I'd be delighted if you would marry my only daughter. Marquis smiled at the princess. I will if the princess wishes to live with me, said Marquis shyly. The princess was so happy that she wanted to dance all around the castle. She blushed in delight and nodded. They married and lived happily ever after. And so did Puss, because loyal Marquis made him a lord of the castle. Puss enjoyed great feasts every day and did not go after rats or mice any more. Except now and then, when he wanted some fun. Mm -hmm.